Kevin Minara, Brother Bazilian, Confrere, it's been a long, long journey. It certainly has. And you're here. Yes. Uh, you're, this is the eve of your final vows and your ordination to the diaconate. Talk to me a little bit about the faith journey that's accompanied you, your own journey of faith that's brought you to this point. Well, people often ask me how long this has taken, and I tell them it began on the day of my baptism. So it's been a long, long time, and it's probably not exaggerating to say that. It's a half a century. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, I just think of, say, you know, the way I grew up, with a very strong Catholic family, uh, had the influence of a fantastic grandmother, um, my parents, uh, the parish that I grew up in, the priest at the parish, uh, the, the school. So I certainly had a great formation from the time I was young that um, solidified my, my initial vocation to, to being a Christian. Uh, you know, some little kids, when, they, when they're young, they want to be a, a cowboy or policeman. Well, I want to be a priest. Why? <clears throat> because of Father Sebastian, um, who I know you, you remember. Father Sebastian Conte Giacomo. He was a fantastic priest. And uh, for me, he epitomized why a priest is called father. Uh, because he truly was like a father, probably for me more like a grandfather. Uh, it wasn't until I got to high school that I discovered that not everybody's pastor picked him up with the bus every morning. And that's what, what Father Sebastian did. And he was, a, he was a constant, wonderful presence in our lives, a very pastoral presence. Um, and then, you know, I, I, would, I guess I would say after adolescence, I sort of had given up the idea of being a priest. Um, but I still wanted to do something related to the church. So for a while I, I discerned after college, um, decided it wasn't for me, and then I became a high school teacher. Um, it's interesting though, no matter how close or how far, far away, and I hate to say far away, uh, I drifted in my faith. I never lost faith. Faith was always the guiding principle. I never doubted for a moment uh, God's presence with me. Um, and then I think over time, what grew in me was the desire to then be sent to share that with others. You had many ways you could have responded to this, many directions you could have gone in, many dioceses or religious orders, but you chose one, the Congregation of St. Basil, the Bazillion Fathers. What and who attracted you to the Bazillion Fathers? Well, you know, that, that's an interesting question. Uh, we went to the same high school and the Bazillions taught there. Um, so I sort of went from, say, Father Sebastian, who was also religious, to the, uh, to the, um, to the Bazillions. Now we should say Father Sebastian was a precious blood father. Was a precious father. blood father. Yeah. Um, so I went to the Bazillions. So my whole experience of priesthood really had been uh, religious priesthood. Um, and the, many of the Bazillions, I don't know if there was one that stood out. I mean, there were certainly, you know, there was, you know, Father Ritz, Father Soretto. Um, you know, there were many of them that stood out. And they were more than teachers, and I think that's what attracted me the most, is that they were, they were more than teachers. They both identified for me uh, as people of faith, as people who were witnessing Christ, um, and as very real people, because as you know, they, you know, they, they certainly had colorful character. Uh, they didn't hide the humanity. No, no, not <laughs> at all. They had very colorful personalities. Um, and then when I went to college, uh, I was educated by the Vincentians. So again, a religious community. So religious community was always very closely identified uh, for priesthood with me. Um, so why the Bazillions? You know, maybe about 14 years ago, I started studying at St. Bernard's and preparing for lay ecclesial ministry in the church. And it, uh, at some point, I discerned along with my faculty advisor that I should switch from an academic to a pastoral track. And I started working in a, I started working in a parish, wonderful parish, and there was sort of a movement in my own heart. And actually, to, to tell you the story, Most Precious Blood, where I grew up, uh, was closing. And um, as I was preparing the altar for the last Mass, you can imagine, it was very emotional. Uh, and I had this strong sense, out of the blue, that came to me and said, you're never going to celebrate your first Mass here. And I thought, well, I'm not going to celebrate my first Mass. I'm not going to become a priest. Um, but that stuck with me. And in the parish, then, people started asking me, why don't you become a priest? You know, how come you don't be, why don't you become a, you'd make a great priest, Kevin. So it's sort of an internal movement and then the outside movement of God's people asking me the question. And if God's people ask you the question enough, you start to wonder if it's God who's asking the question. Our bazillion charism, our mission is education in the church's mission of evangelization. How does education and evangelization come together in Kevin Manara? Well, 
for many years I was a high school teacher, um, so I was very committed to education. And then once I started working in a parish, what I realized was how much being an educator was also a part of parish life. So it's possible then to use a parish setting also as a great teaching place. Yes, it is. Uh, you know, often when we, when we thought of education in the past, we thought of institutions. Um, whereas I think part of our understanding of evangelization today is that education has to permeate everything that we do. And at times it may be institutionalized in a school, but certainly in parish life and in the many different apostolates that the Bazillions are involved in. Uh, and what's so appealing with the Bazillions, I guess, uh, you know, there's the expression, a big fish in a little pond or a little fish in a big pond. Because we are a small community, each of us has a really important and influential role in, in who we are. And I think that's one of the things that really solidified, once I started discerning with the Bazillions, uh, solidified that that was the right place for me. You also had something else in the making of Kevin Minara as a religious, a consecrated religious and priest. You had a very powerful experience in Chicago at the Catholic Theological Union. In fact, not too long ago, you sat in this very hot seat on the witness set and you shared with us your doctoral research in that marvelous book about parishes, the merging together of parishes, formation of new parishes. How did the experience of Chicago and CTU bring you to this point? It was interesting because I, I had begun discerning with the Bazillions before I went to CTU. Um, and CTU is made up of all religious communities. And I have to say, even though I was not a Bazillion at that point, I, fell in, I started to fall in love with religious life so based on my experience at a, CTU. A consortium or theological center like that, you would say, is also important for consecrated religious. Definitely. Uh, because it was religious working together. Um, and we got to see other aspects of religious life, but there was, there was something distinct that I was able to pick up at CTU that really attracted me all the more to religious life. So you weren't tempted away from the Bazillions, but rather the experience of rubbing elbows and shoulders with Passionists and Norbertines and Franciscans confirmed you in your vocation as yeah, a Bazillion. Exactly. Um, I, and I, I was actually just thinking about that uh, this, this morning. I never thought... I loved all these different communities. I loved their way of life, but there was something that always drew me back to the Bazillions. And, um, and Father Smith has been wonderful through the entire process, our Superior General. Um, he told me that, you know, have a great experience at CTU, and the Bazillions are always here for you. My last question to you. Our motto of the Bazillions is teach me goodness, discipline, and knowledge. What does goodness, discipline, and knowledge mean for Kevin Manara on the eve of his diaconal ordination? I would have to say, for me, what it means is keeping my eyes focused on Christ and understanding goodness through the lens of Christ. Um, knowledge, the knowledge of Christ and the knowledge that Christ gives us uh, for ourselves and for the world. Um, and, and discipline, what's going to direct us towards Christ. What message would you give to a young person watching this of why he should consider the Bazillion Fathers as his way of life? Uh, I could say that the Bazillion Fathers have been 100% supportive of me individually as a person and then integrating me into the community. So I think that I, I would invite them to consider the Bazillions because there's a place for them. And the Bazillions have, have a place for, uh, for all of us. But I think what was most crucial was the attitude that, that was taken throughout my discernment process, which if God is calling you to this life, then it's our role to find a place uh, for you to, to live out your vocation. Kevin, on behalf of the Bazillion Congregation, I think I, I can echo many people's voices in saying welcome, congratulations, we're with you, but also on behalf of the Board of Trustees of St. John Fisher College, of which I'm a member, St. John Fisher College is thrilled and blessed to be having you join their team as the chaplain of that great independent Catholic college in the United States. God Thank bless, you. and don't be a stranger to Salt and Light. Thank you.